I am so pumped to be speaking to you guys tonight at H2O. Are you excited for H2O? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love water, everything about it, for real. I love laying by it, I love laying in it, I love drinking it in, I love peeing it out, everything about it. So, huge shout out to Pastor Dave for this honor, really means a lot. So tonight, H2O, you're going to be throwing water balloons at each other at a certain point, right? And there's going to be one dingbat that chucks it right at your face, right? You're not supposed to do that. No, 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 no. Don't do it. But guess what? There's going to be just some dummy that does it anyways. And then you're going to see it out of your periffs coming at you. And then you're going to go, Poof! what just happened? And you're going to dodge it without even trying to. It's called your reflexes, right? You know what I'm talking about. It's those times where you feel like a total secret agent, Superman combined kind of guy, and you don't really know how that just happened, but it happened. You see, we all have that one friend, am I right? Where you go, hey, Matt, catch, and then you throw it. He looks right at it. He knows it's coming. It gets closer to his face, but for some reason, he just can't get his hands in this position, and it still hits him in the face, those are bad reflexes. So we have physical reflexes. We don't only have physical reflexes, but we have emotional reflexes as well. You see, when something sad happens, we are sad, right? We don't choose to be sad. It just happens because we've trained ourselves to know that being sad, sadness, is an appropriate response to sad times. You, go, you know what I'm saying, right? Come on. Don't fall asleep on me already. So often, our emotional reflexes actually influence our physical reflexes. You know where I'm going with this. You stub your toe. You don't stub your toe and then make a decision in your mind and go, hmm, that was undeniably painful. I do declare that now is a proper time to vociferate my irritation. No! You flip out! And then you scream, and then you put your hand over your mouth because you didn't even know you were going to scream, so you scared yourself from screaming. You didn't mean to scream, and you just yelled it out, right? Because your emotional reflex actually triggered a physical reflex that you weren't even ready for. You felt pain, and then you acted out in pain right? You, you felt something hit your toe, and then your emotional reflex went, ouchie, that hurt. Better tell the boys downstairs what's going on. And then your physical reflex went, ouchie, that hurt. And you didn't even know it was going to happen. And that is how they work in tandem, together. See, you have Physical reflex, you have emotional reflex. You might not know this, but there's one more type of reflex we have. Spiritual reflex. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. Because spiritual reflex is the most important kind of reflex. Because your spiritual reflex actually invokes your emotional reflex, which influences your physical reflex. So if you can control your spiritual reflex and train your spiritual reflex... You can train all of your other reflexes. Luke 6.45 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's like super important. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's that telling us? Garbage in, garbage out. Right? You put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. You train your heart to act like a stupid poopy butt, you're going to act like a stupid poopy butt without even deciding to act like a stupid poopy butt because you have stupid poopy butt reflexes. And that is called Chipotle on a Friday evening. <laughs> so if you train your heart, you train your reflexes. If you misguide your heart, you misguide yourself because your reflexes will misguide you. Like I said, I love... Water, water activities, everything about it. Kay and I, earlier this summer, 
we went all the way up to Port Austin to go uh, canoeing. And uh, it was a nice, peaceful river, river and we, we started going down the river and, uh, you know, nice and slow. Nice hot day with a nice breeze in our, in our backs, you know, it's like perfect day. Come around the corner and we, uh, we made a new friend. His name's Derek. Uh-uh, don't think about it, buddy. Hey. Back up. You're just paddle. <laughs> Back up. Left, okay. Back up. <laughs> As you can tell, Derek's a good guy. He is. He, his temperament is a little tilted. Like, he was a bit of a hothead. Couldn't really tell where he was coming from and where he was going next a lot of times. But all in all, he was, he was a good guy. I mean, we, we came around the corner. We met Derek. He was like, what's up? My name's Derek. And I'm like, what's up, dude? Derek? We hung out for a while. Shared some stories on the lake, you know. And then moved on. And that was the end of it. We went on, finished the route on the canoe path, and had lunch on the beach. It was a great day. We came back around. We turned the corner, and there was Derek. And we're like, hey, Derek. What's up? Haven't seen you in like 20 minutes. So nothing really changed, I couldn't imagine. Derek was ticked. No idea why, but he was so mad. Now, since, unfortunately, I put the request out and Derek couldn't join us tonight, I brought his twin brother, Eric. <laughs> How you doing, boy? So this is what happened. Kay and I come around the corner. We see Derek waiting for us. Like I said, not a happy camper at a state park. Doesn't make sense. He comes trucking at us. Swimming faster and faster and faster. We have about a 30-foot gap to get around him. So what do we do? We paddle. We paddle our arms off. I got shredded from 30 seconds of paddling. You don't even understand. We were going so fast, a tsunami starts forming behind the boat. We get, I don't know, 50 feet away. A comfortable distance. We made it. We are good to go. And then suddenly... I look back and I, I see Derek. We think we're all good. And then we start laughing to ourselves. It's like, that was a close one. And then I look back again and Derek picks his neck up and spreads his wings from here to Texas. He sees us as predators. I get it. You know, like, I don't want him coming in my house, putting his feet on my coffee table. I understand, like, okay, you're trying to intimidate us. Nice one, intimidated, I'm gonna move on now. So I look forward, give it an old row, give it another row, turn back, and to my surmise, Derek puts on his NASCAR helmet and got Jeff Gordon trucking at us now. Derek starts coming at us full bore like flying 100 miles an hour, given we're like 50 feet away from him still at this point. So we think we're all right, no big deal, we're good. I've got about four seconds to think, what do you do? They don't, they don't teach you this in high school. <laughs> they don't teach you this in college. They don't teach you this in an internship. What do I do? And so I, you know, I did what anyone would have done. I froze. I look over at Kay, and she's an icicle as well. Our jaws are on the floor of the boat, and we're just staring at Derek coming at us. And I'm thinking, 
I can't believe this is happening. He's coming right at us. He gets about halfway. I realize he's not even coming for me. He's coming for Kay at the front of the boat. And then... It took me about 20 seconds to realize I just slapped a swan with a canoe oar right across the neck as hard as I could. Kaylee said, or, or later on, she said, Luke, I watched the whole thing. It was like, it was like slow pitch softball. Like, you just watched it come to you. I said, Kay. I felt his feathers on my arm. I was playing t-ball. I squared up and swung at my leisure. Wrecked him. Now, so you don't call DNR on me, I got to say, Derek's fine. He is. We, uh, we took the interns up the next week, and we ran into Derek. We actually got to meet his kid, because that's why he was being so territorial. We're cool now, you know, he, right there? We shared some old stories, caught up, had a cup of coffee. We can laugh about it now, it's all good, so don't worry about Derek. The point is, I didn't think or decide what I was gonna do. It literally just happened. I see this swan coming at me, I couldn't think of anything to do. I was frozen. And then all of a sudden, I see a clothesline swan like this in the water. <laughs> he gets up and looks at me, and I'm like, we got to go, Kay. That was all I had. That was my one move. But I didn't have to think or decide what I was going to do. And that's the point. You see, my spiritual reflexes the entire day were warning me about this swan's temperament. They were warning me and being like, hey, um, just so you know, he kind of looks like a psycho. And that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me the whole day. It might be as silly as a swan, but the Holy Spirit was speaking to keep us safe because we read later, we were reading stories on BBC of this guy gets knocked off his kayak and held under by a swan, and he died. Super sad, super crazy. These things are dangerous. If I would have known that beforehand, who knows what would have happened. I may have jumped out and said, you're on your own, Kay. But the Lord knew what I needed to know in that moment, and he was warning me all day, watch out for that swan. I wasn't thinking, man, if that swan comes at me, I'm going to swing. I didn't think about it at all, honestly. Didn't cross my mind once. I didn't even realize I swung until like 30 seconds later. And then my emotional reflexes were sensing an urgency in that moment to tell my physical reflexes, hey, yo, Luke, let's give a warm welcome to Derek in his new home at Suplex City. Boom! Wrecked him. Didn't even see it coming. It just happens. See, I made a previous decision in training my heart that I was going to protect Kaylee. That was something I knew already before going into that trip. I didn't think specifically, man, I'm going to protect her from a swan one day. No. I just know I'm going to protect Kaylee no matter what. And so in that moment, my reflexes took over. I, I didn't need to decide I'm going to protect Kaylee right now. My reflexes took over and protected Kaylee before my mind could really even recognize what was going on. See, Proverbs 25, 28 says, A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. When you do not train your heart in the ways of the Lord, your reflexes actually work against you. See, what happens is 
you're left without a defense. Your defense is compromised. And then you're vulnerable to attack from the enemy. See, some of you are, are misguiding your heart in secret. You don't see it as a big deal. Well, if I watched this movie. It's, it's got some nudity in it, but it's like no big deal. Oh, when I hang out with these friends, I'll, I'll say whatever I want. But then, you know, when I go to church or when I'm around my parents, I'll, I'll clean it up and it's no big deal. See, if you're, you're thinking you're all cool, cussing with your friends and saying things you shouldn't say, you're going to stub your toe. Guess what the first words out of your mouth are going to be? Probably words you shouldn't say because your reflexes are compromised. If you're busy looking at things on the internet you shouldn't be looking at, you get so deep in that, you just compromise your reflexes. Next time you're watching TV or you're on Instagram, Facebook, there's an ad or some sort of something inappropriate pops up, you're not going to have the reflex to change the channel, to not go to that Instagram profile, to not talk to that girl, to not talk to that guy. Because you're so desensitized to sin that you completely misguided your heart and your reflexes are now misguiding you to the point where you can't even hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Who's the Holy Spirit? It's that small voice saying, don't do it. Dude, it's a bad idea. Trust me. Just trust me. It's a bad idea. He's guiding us in our decisions. When we don't know if we're going left or right, just listen. You see, he's warning. <laughs> he's warning all of us about a super mean Swanzilla around the corner that's trying to kill you. And we're not paying attention. Because we've misguided our hearts. We're not training ourselves to have proper reflex in proper time. Because the devil, he's scheming to kill you, to destroy you, to strip you of all confidence and potential that the Lord has put inside you from birth. Did you know that? The Lord put a purpose on your life when you were born. He created you for a reason. God doesn't make mistakes. So when things go wrong in our own eyes, What's your reflex going to be? How are you going to respond to it? Are you going to respond going, God, why'd you do this? You hate me. You hate my family. You always have. Or are you going to respond with, God, I don't get it. I don't like it. But I know you know me better than I know myself. And I know you have my best interest in mind. So buckle up. I'm along for the ride. See, if you're, if you're constantly in this secret sin, misguiding your heart, it's no secret that you have no reflex. So your private indulgence becomes your public influence. What you're doing behind closed doors becomes who you are and what you stand for. That's why it's so important to, to train your heart, to guard it, to have the proper reflex at the proper time. Because God is directing all of us every single day. We just got to listen. If you want to bow your heads and close your eyes, I've got a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, if you're in this room right now and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, you have not ever accepted him in your heart. On the count of three, I want you to lift your hand. One, two, three. Don't overthink it. Just put it up, put it down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up, down, real quick. Just signify to the Lord, I want you in my life. Thank you. All right, now, this next category, if you feel like 
you've been misguiding your heart and training your heart for all the wrong reflexes. And you're just asking God, Lord, I'm messed up. I've made so many mistakes. But I need you, and I need you to train my reflexes and quicken me, quicken the Holy Spirit in me to show me what I need to stay away from, to give me the strength to follow through with it. If that's you right now, on the count of three, put your hands up. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you. Just up, down, real easy. Thank you. That's awesome. That was a lot of people. Again, I like to say that was a lot of people. So you know you're not alone. More than likely, the person next to you lifted, your, lifted their hand as you lifted your hand. And so that's how we can become accountable with one another. If you know that you are deep in sin in a secretive, faker Christian life, just talk about it. We're all family here. We'll get through it together. Now I'm going to pray right now. And if you want to accept Jesus in your heart, I want you to pray that in your heart, in your heart. I want you to ask the Lord to come into you, make you whole, and start a relationship with him. And at the same time, if you need a renewal in your reflexes, I want you to pray that in your heart as well. Jesus, we come before you completely honored and humbled that the creator of the universe would meet us in our mess, in our complicated way, just the way we made it. So right now, I ask that you uncomplicate us. God, you show us how to train our hearts in deep relationship with you. God, so that the times of temptation and trial when they come, we will have proper reflex and proper timing to evade the enemy's schemes and learn to love you, God, even greater. So right now we submit ourselves in obedience to you and say, with us, do what you want. We love you so much. And everybody in this place said, amen, amen. Come on, give a shout to the Lord. Amen.